Today we're going to learn about electron configurations. Remember when we talked about energy levels break into sublevels, sublevels split into orbitals, and then orbitals split into spins. This is we're going to work on that when we do electron configurations. Well, first of all, why do we do this with electrons? Well, remember, protons and neutrons are inside the nucleus, which is very dense, very small. But the electrons are gained, lost, and shared all the time in chemical reactions. So they tell us a lot about the properties of an atom. So we're going to spend a lot of time talking specifically about the electrons. So let's begin. Electron configuration is arrangement of electrons in the atom, and it determines how the atom reacts. Electron configuration is equal to the arrangement of electrons in an atom's orbitals and energy levels. Now, there's two rules for de uh, determining electron configurations. Rule one, each orbital can hold a maximum of two electrons. And the rule two is called the off-ball principle. It's that electrons fill orbitals that have the lowest energy first. And so we're going to use what we, at first, something called, something we call an off-ball diagram. Let's begin. So how things are categorized. So first we have the energy levels, and we have energy level one, two, and three. So you notice here, these are called... We have principle one, two, three, and four. Those refer to energy levels. So energy level one has one sublevel, and that one's called 1s. And energy level two has two sublevels. One is 2s, the other is 2p. Energy uh, three has three sublevels, and that would be 3s. And then we have 3p. And then we also have 3d. Now, we're energy level 4, there are four sublevels there, and that would be 4s. And then we have 4p. And next we have 4d. Sorry. And, la and last we have 4f. You need to memorize s, p, d, and f in that order. s, p, d, and f. And as we do more, those will come to you. So let's continue. Let's say we have, first we're going to look at the periodic table a lot. Say I want to do an electron configuration, for example, carbon. So I need to look at the periodic table. When you do that, you'll see that you see the element carbon has atomic number six. So we'll do these for neutral atoms to start with. So we know that carbon has six electrons. So where do those six electrons go? Well, first they go to the lowest energy level, which is 1s. And remember that line represents an orbital. And in an s, there's one, only one sublevel. And and 1s itself is a sublevel, and so in 1s you get two electrons, and we'll represent those with arrows. Then we get to 2s, that's the next one, you fill that up. That's normal there, you fill up two electrons, so you go one with an arrow up, one with an arrow down, so that's four electrons. And the next one would go into energy level 2p. So you fill up the lowest one first, which is 1s, the next one, which is 2s, the next one, which is 2p. We've used up four of the six electrons, so the next one in 2p, go uh, and facing the same direction, one arrow up, and then the next orbital, what they, don't, what they do is they don't fill the first orbital, they go to the next orbital, and they put one electron in each orbital until they double up, and this is something called Hund's rule. H-U-N-D apostrophe S, Hund's rule. And Hund's rule states is that you put one electron in each orbital before they double up. I like to refer to this as a bus rule. If you were to get on a bus and someone was in a seat, you would not sit in the seat next to them. You'd probably get in the seat behind them or somewhere else. And so Hund's rule works the same way. You put one electron in each orbital. Now notice in 2p there are three orbitals. There's one, there's two, and there's three. Those are there's three orbitals. So we'll put one electron in each orbital before we double up. We can get a total of six electrons in P orbital. What you should memorize here is the S, P, D, and F. There's only one orbital in S, whether it's 1S, 2S, 3S, and you, that's represented here. Next, there's P. P's, you can actually have three orbitals. Three orbitals, each holding two electrons, would be six. And we have P, and then we have D, and then we have F. So in S, there is one orbital, and that holds two electrons. In P, there are three orbitals, and that holds six electrons. In D, let's count these. There's one, two, three, four, five orbitals. So in D, there's five orbitals, and that can hold 10 electrons. 
And then last, there would be f, and if we count all these in f right here, all the way across, in f there's seven orbitals, and then that would hold 14 electrons. Is, let's say, when we look at this 1s, what does a 1 represent? The 1 in the front represents what we call the energy level. So, energy level 1. And the lower the number, the closer to the nucleus. The S represents the sublevel. So, S, P, D, and F are sublevels. So, in energy level 2, there are two sublevels, 2S and 2P. In energy level 3, there are three sublevels, the sublevels, 3S, 3P, and 3D. So, that's how the way these sublevels work. So, if we were to do an electron configuration for carbon, how you'd write this out, I'll do this up here at the top, is we'd say we have 1, S, and then we write that as a superscript 2, and then we'd say we have 2S, and then as a superscript 2, and then we have 2P, then as a superscript 2. Now notice we said there's six electrons. If you add up all these superscripts, they should add up to six, which is the number of electrons. Now how do you remember this order? There's three ways to remember the order where the electrons are filled. Remember they go those, with the lowest energy level first, and within sublevels, if you ever have orbitals of equal energy, which you will at, at 2, at 2P, 3D, or any of the P's or D's or F's, you'll need to follow Hun's rule. So we've got energy levels, sublevels, and then we've got orbitals. The energy levels would be the number in front, the sublevels would be S, P, D, and F, and then the orbitals we, we represented here with lines. Now sometimes you may fill something out when they represent it with a circle or a box, but it just represents like if, for example, at P we're going to have three orbitals, D will have five, F will have seven. This, this number right here is the number of orbitals again, and then the number below it would be the number of electrons that orbital can hold. So let's continue. Now what's another way to remember the order is if you draw arrows like this. So you say 1S, then you write 2S and 2P, then write uh, 3S, 3P, and 3D in 4s, 4p, 4d, 4f, and then 5s, 5p, 5d, 5f. Now notice the ones in green here, these are what we call excited state. That only happens if you add an electron, add energy to it, it jumps up to a higher energy level. So how do you know the order here? So the first one would be 1s, then 2s, then 2p, then 3s, then 3p, and 4s, then go back up 3d, 4p, 5s, go back up 4D, 5P, 6S, go back up 4F, 5D, 6P, 7S, go back up 4, 5F, 6D. So you see how that works. This gives us the exact order, and you just would need to remember S, P, D, F. S's can hold two electrons, P's can hold six, D's can hold 10, and F's can hold 14 because there's seven orbitals. There's one, three, five, seven is the number of orbitals. So let's continue. Row one elements. Hydrogen's one electron is in the 1s orbital and it's written like this. So you just say 1s1. That's how you do it. So that's how all these are done. So for example, the number in front, once again, is the energy level. And this the 1s and that together is called the sub-level, sub-level. And the superscript would be the number of electrons found in that, uh, that sublevel for that substance. Let's continue. More for electron configurations. Remember, there are two rules for electron configurations. Rule one, each orbital can hold a maximum of two electrons. Rule two, orbitals fill the orbitals that have lowest energy first. And rule three, the order in which orbitals are filled is not always based on energy level. An easy way to remember the order of, uh, of filling is to use a periodic table. Notice there are three blocks here. We have the pink block, which we call this here. This is the S block. And then over here, this is our P block. And this is our D block. And then here, finally, that's our F block. Because what you do here is, let's say you want to do, this time, the electron configuration of, let's say, this element right here. So if you look at our periodic table, that element is fluorine. So what is the electron configuration for fluorine? Well, it would be 1s2. Uh, so you'd start off, you'd say there's 1s2, and that fills up there. Then you go, that's this is next. So you read it from left to right, like you'd read pages of words in a page. Then you go to this next. That, so that would be 2s2. And then you go across here, 
and then 2p would be next. And so you count the number of boxes, which would represent adding an electron each time. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So then we'd say 2p, 5. If I add up 5 and 2, I get 7, plus 2 more is 9. And that's equal to the atomic number of fluorine, so that should be correct. This is the atomic, and this is how you use the periodic table. And this is the best method that I recommend that you use. Let's do an uh, example. So what's helium's configuration? Notice, so helium has two electrons, so helium should be 1s2. Next one, what's lithium's? Lithium has three electrons. It's right here. So it should add one past that. It should be 1s2, 2s1. Next one. What's beryllium? Remember, beryllium is right here. So it's going to be adding one more electron to what we have for lithium. So instead of 1s2, 2s1, it should be 1s2, 2s2. Then lastly, what is boron? Remember, boron would be right here. So boron is jumping to the next level. So it, it, what it, only thing it's going to be adding is to this right here, we're going to add another one. And you hopefully you can see that would be 2p. So it would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p1. A couple things when you do the electron configuration that you want to notice is we put electrons into two categories. We have the inner or core electrons and the outer or valence electrons. The ones that are involved in the reactions that are lost, gained, or shared are the valence electrons. Core electrons are very stable and they're not affected that much. For example, if we do the electron configuration for silicon, we have 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p2. The ones in blue are the core or inner electrons. And the ones in yellow are the valence or outer electrons. If we look at the same way, if we look at electron configuration for chlorine, notice it has seven valence electrons because you at look, you have a 3s2 and 3p5. Remember, the superscript is a number of electrons in those orbitals, so it has seven valence electrons. But it has 10 core electrons or inner electrons. Very important concept. Orbitals of higher energy, electrons levels three and up overlap, and some orbitals are at lower energy levels than others, even though they are at a higher energy level. And the 4s orbital is at the lower is lower energy than 3d. So that's something that's different because we see 4s is actually further away. Remember the number in front represents a distance from the nucleus, but 4s is actually lower than energy than 3d. 4s four, four orbital must be filled with two electrons before filling the 3d. And the overlapping that occurs in energy levels 3 and up determines the order that electrons are filled. And this is something that shows the overlapping. But what I guess I want to point back to for a second is to look at our periodic table. Remember, if you use a periodic table, you go 4s, and then after that we go to 3d. So even though the number is going lower, close to the nucleus, the 3D is higher energy. So it goes 4S, 3D, 4P. And over here, you go 5S, 4D, 5P. So notice that may be counterintuitive because we're going to a lower number. We go to the Ds, but the Ds actually indeed are of lower energy. So electron configurations. Let's do the last two things to close up with. Let's determine the electron configuration for new atoms, cobalt, and krypton. So when you look at your periodic table, we see, first of all, cobalt is number 27. So we have 27 electrons to take care of. So cobalt, if we write it out, would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, which is 10 electrons, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d7. 4 here plus 6 gives us 10, plus 2 more gives us 12, plus 6 more gives us 18, plus two more gives us 20, and then we add those, we get 27. So that'd be the same number of electrons, or that's the same as atomic number because it's neutral. Let's do one more atom. Let's do krypton. Krypton is exactly the same, except 3D is completely filled, and then you have a 4S. Something that'd be interesting here is to let's, I'm gonna underline the outer electrons or the valence electrons. In krypton, the valence electrons are always the highest number, so it's 4s2 and, I'm sorry, the 4s2 and the 4p6. If I were to circle the core electrons, all of these are core because they're inner, but we're also going to circle the 3d because that is a core electron. That's it. Have a great night and look forward to seeing you doing some electron configurations.